And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Magnapolia, which was a request from PaleoMike716 via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. It was a Lambiosaurine hadrosaurid that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Baja California, Mexico, in the El Gallo Formation. It was a very large hadrosaur with a crest on top of its head, and a bulky body, walked on four legs, and it had a tall tail. Love those Lambiosaurines. <laughs> Thinking of Parasaurolophus. Now, originally, it was estimated to be between 49 to 54 feet, oh. or 15 to 16 and a half meters long, and weigh up to 8.8 .8 tons. Holy moly, that's a big dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Much bigger than that new ankylosaur. Yeah, much bigger than I think any hadrosaur ever. Although you said originally. Well, in 2012, Albert Prieto Marquez and others estimated it to be around 41 feet or 12 and a half meters long. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Tiny little thing. <laughs> that's still, still huge. That's, I think, like Edmontosaurus type size. That's very, very big. Yes. It is. Except it's a lambiosaurine too. So it had the, like you said, the big head crest. That's super cool. Yeah, it was, it's been described as a giant hadrosaurid. The type species is Magnapolia laticatus. It was described in 1981 by William Morris. Originally, Morris referred the fossils to Hippacrosaurus altispinus based on the long neural spines of the tail, but then he changed it to C.F. Lambiosaurus, that's based on details of the premaxilla, the upper jaw. And then he named it Lambiosaurus laticatus, based on its large size and the tall neural spines in the tail. Later, scientists suggested Lambiosaurus laticatus could be Hippacrosaurus, or not a valid taxon. Magnapolia was named by Albert Prieto Marquez, Chiapi, and Joshi as Magnapolia in 2012. I'm not surprised that Albert Prieto Marquez was part of it because he is a hadrosaur expert, as we've come to know. <laughs> and an unapologetic splitter. Mm. <laughs> the genus name means large, and polia, the polia part, is in honor of, quote, Mr. Paul Haga for his outstanding support to the research and public programs of the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County and its Dinosaur Institute, end quote. And the species name means broad tail. The fossils were found in an excavation by the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County between 1968 and 1974. The holotype includes parts of the jaw, vertebrae, parts of the leg, parts of the pelvis, and parts of the arm. Well, that's pretty good. So you've got head all the way through hips here and there and legs. So for a 40-foot long dinosaur, that's a, quite a bit of bones to get out. You can see why it took him six years. There are also 24 referred specimens found. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> they were all within three meters of where the holotype was found. Okay, so those aren't 24 individuals. There's multiple bones from same individuals, probably, if it's within three meters. Well, the fossils found include partial skeletons and skin impressions. Ooh. Morris thought that Lambiosaurus laticatus now Magnapolia, spent its time in the water because it was so big and it had such a tall, narrow tail that maybe that was good for swimming because it could give itself a push. We're going back to that, huh? Yeah. He also talked about weak connections in the hips and there was a healed broken thigh bone that he thought would have been too difficult of an injury to survive on land. You know, it's easier to recover in water because you have less weight on the leg. <laughs> it was going into like a therapy pool. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of surprising for 1981 to be talking about the dinosaurs too heavy to be on land because that was, I think, pretty well debunked by that point. Mm. I think part of it, though, was the unusual tail. Yeah, that's true. I mean, people are even now talking about that with Spinosaurus. So. Mm -hmm. Now, Prieto Marquez and others said that adult hadrosaurids were between 7 to 10 meters long and Magnapolio was much longer, quote, one of the largest known hadrosaurid species, not only in North America, but in the world, end quote. And that's what makes it a giant hadrosaurid. That's the truth. It is a huge hadrosaur. Yeah. And Chappie wrote on his site that, quote, the size was so impressive that it could have been mistaken for an apatosaurus, end quote. <laughs> wow. <laughs> At least a, you know, not, not a maximum sized apatosaurus, but, you know, a moderately sized or juvenile apatosaurus for sure. Something much bigger than you'd think a hadrosaur would be. Yeah. Magnapolia had a proportionately slender femur. Only fragments of the crest have been found. 
It had elongated chevrons and vertebral spines similar to Hippacrosaurus, which meant that it had a tall tail. The tail of one specimen that's been found had skin impressions with large scales up to four centimeters wide that were surrounded by one centimeter wide hexagonal and rounded scales. And in freedom units, that's what, two inches for the big ones and half an inch for the little ones? (laughs) Sounds about right. (laughs) Do you like my use of freedom units? (laughs) That caught me off guard, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's just a joke because they're more difficult to use than metric. Ah, I see. That was an interesting choice of words there. Anyway, (laughs) Magnapolia is closely related to Velifrons, which was also found in what is now Mexico, and we covered Velifrons back in episode 324. Other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place as Magnapolia include Dromaeosaurs, Tyrannosaurs, Hadrosaurs, and Ankylosaurs, and other animals that lived around the same time and place include Lepidosaurs, mammals, and amphibians. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.